What's up, Marty Cookie? If you are an artist and you're planning to offer commissions or you're just starting out, there are some serious scams that have been targeting artists that you need to know about. Obviously, we've all encountered different online scams. Depending on what industry you are in, maybe you got it from your email, your Facebook, or whatever. But this time, this scam is specifically targeting towards artists. So I think it's important to talk about it. One of our most recent Instagram scams have been targeting towards artists. So if you are new and you're planning to open your work up for commission, you gotta know those scam artists' MO in order to protect yourself. So the way those scammers operate is usually they will contact you for social media like Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, and they will pretend to get a commission from you. And the worst part is that their scam is getting more and more intricate, which means that for an untrained eye, especially if you're just starting out, you don't have enough experience or you don't have a system set up, it is very easy to get scammed. So let me tell you about their MO and how they operate so they don't scam you. So number one thing to watch out for, Yes, they will contact you from Instagram, but their account might still look quite real. Maybe they're using a stolen account. Maybe they really have an account that they use to mask those scams. So they're not necessarily looking like a scammer or a bot. But first of all, when they contact you, they will ask you if you're open for commission. But how can you tell if it's really a scam? Well, first thing to watch out for is they're gonna offer you a larger amount right off the bat. So they will offer you $200 up, sometimes 2,000, sometimes 5,000. They will often try to play sympathy card. They will say it's a drawing for their son's birthday that is coming up. They wanna order uh, his pets commissions painting, or maybe it's a gift for their wife because their anniversary coming up, things like that. They will try to make it look real, play on your emotions and make you feel like it's a gift. And that's the reason why they want to pay more. They want to pay for quality or they'll say, oh, I want to support young artists and things like that. Those people will usually have uh, poor English. You will notice it right away. They will insist on the amount that they're paying you or they will even try to offer you more. So if you ask them like, oh, actually my uh, commission is only $35, I'm happy with this price, they will still pretend like they're appreciating your work and they want to support you, blah, blah, blah. Or like, oh, I just really want a high quality work. They will say things like that to try to up your price and make it as high as possible. And so for the payments method, they will either try to send you a check so usually they say like, oh, I want to use my son's savings account, so I'm going to send you a check. And that's how they scam people. Or they will ask for your PayPal, which will seem like a safer option, but also they're going to ask for some of your information. They're going to ask for your name or where are you located, which should be a red flag as well. Once they ask for your PayPal, what they're going to do is they're going to send you a fake email. And the reason they ask for your name is because by using this email, they will use your real name. So it will look like a real PayPal sent it. And they even have the, one of those friendly email names on the PayPal account. So you gotta watch out for that. It will say something like PayPal support, but then if you open it, it's gonna have like zero one or something. Generally do not open any links that you get from commissions. Like if a person wanna get a commission from you, do not open any links they send you as well. Sometimes when artists work in the traditional media, those scammers are even trying to scam them out of their artworks. And there's a whole different thing, but basically a lot of times you would be contacted and the scammer would say like, oh, I'm actually currently on the ship, like somewhere in the ocean, uh, but can you send it to this address? Things like that. They will try to not only get your valuable artwork, but also get money out of you. <laughs> With a PayPal thing, they even almost got me one time. I've actually got contacted by a guy who looked legit and his account looked legit. Like he's been posting for a while and like, it looked like a real account. And uh, his English was relatively okay. His whole story kind of added up. And the price range wasn't as big. It was only $200, which is, uh, you know, for some of my high, very high res, uh, artworks sometimes I do charge higher so like it wasn't that shady to begin with so at first I wasn't sure it looked like a real commission purchase and because the price kind of lined up with what I had at the time like they almost got me so what they did is they ordered the artwork the worst part is that I actually spent a bunch of time working on the three artworks they ordered from me and that was a total waste of time but I repurposed it anyway so it's okay now the most important thing is that they didn't scam me out of money. So they asked for my PayPal uh, address. I sent them the PayPal link. 
If you're operating through PayPal, there is such a thing as PayPal Me. You can get your custom link and that's a way that people can send you money. So they claimed that it wasn't working and they asked for my PayPal email. So I sent it, like, honestly, they got me there. I thought that maybe the link isn't working because at the time I just installed PayPal Me. So I figured that maybe there is something wrong with the link or it's not going through. So I gave them my email and then I was checking my PayPal. Nothing was coming in. I was waiting. Nothing was coming in again. Uh, I checked my emails and I didn't get anything. And they would keep asking me whether or not I got an email. And here's the thing, I didn't get an email from them, probably because I already have my email set up so that a lot of scammy emails cannot contact me. I've spent a lot of time filtering things like that. So that might have contributed to that, but I never got their email. But the thing is, they were constantly asking me about it and saying like, you should check it, make sure to check it. Like they were really caring whether or not money are coming in to me more than they're actually caring about getting the artwork which was really weird. So that's when I started checking and I realized that this scam has been going on for a while now. And this guy was just generally better than a lot of them. Like he had a okay English. The amount seemed reasonable. Like he asked for PayPal, which, you know, if they're, they're not asking for check, they're asking for PayPal, you lower your guard down. But email is how they get you. So if you get an email from PayPal, be careful, make sure to check what is it coming from? Do not click any links because PayPal would never send you links like that. You can also go on your PayPal account and check it internally because any information or notification coming out through your email, they should be in your PayPal internally. If there is nothing, no uh, amounts, there is no notification, nothing like that, do not worry. It would be on their website. So just don't click on any links, especially if it's like on PayPal account after you get a commission. And yes, while I did spend a bunch of time working on the artwork and like my first reaction was a big disappointment because I wasted a lot of time, but at least I didn't get scammed out of money. And I found a way to actually repurpose that work. So what you can do if you did get scammed uh, and wasted your time, but you caught it in time, you didn't actually got scammed out of money, just scammed out of your time. What I did is I used those paintings as an example for my commissions. So now on my shop, if people want to order a commission and they kind of want to know what it's going to look like, I use this as an example. Now look, you guys, for us as artists, commissions are important. We've got a skill and we got to use it to make a living. And we can't just let some a-holes scare us out of it just because they're trying to scam us. And because some of those scammers are getting quite good, it is difficult to tell which commissions orders are real, which are scam. So let's put a system in place and safety precautions that you can use to safely operate with commissions, even if they're coming from Instagram or social media. So here's how you set up clear system. Number one, you need to have set pricing. Whatever it might look like for you, depending on how many hours you spend on your work, depending on what your work looks like, depending on your competition and all of those things combined together, you gotta set your pricing for specific things that you would do for your commissions. Second thing is you need to be clear about the kind of commissions you're offering. What do you do? What do you not do? For example, if you are an artist that is drawing mainly girls and this is what you're known for, why would you be doing a landscape? right so you need to be setting those rules you need to be setting that system so that when people are ordering commissions they know what you're willing to do what you're not willing to do so if you're doing uh, pictures of girls that's the thing that you're doing you're not doing landscape you're not doing uh, or maybe you are doing not safe for work stuff it is up to you you know it is your house your rules and you gotta set those rules up front better yet share it on your social media so that people that are ordering commission from you already have information about the pricing about the kind of commission you do how much would it cost for a portrait versus a full body commission and things like that generally when you are getting a commission from people from your social media they should expect for you to do the kind of style that you're doing in your social media that's the reason they're getting your work as a commission in the first place better yet share those things create a post and be clear about what you do, how much it would cost, and have it on your social media so people can see it and it's easier for them to order and have expectations as well. Now, when you're clear with the kind of commissions that you offer and you're clear with your pricing, you gotta figure out and set your payment method. It's important to have a several type of payment method in place, ready to go. So when the person is ordering commission from you, you have a reliable, protected source through which you're getting paid. 
Now, it is still a good idea to have PayPal. I think PayPal is really useful. You just gotta be careful. Be careful mainly with emails that you're getting from PayPal, which is a lot of times can be a scam. But the PayPal itself as a platform is good and safe, and you can use uh, what is called PayPal Me, which is a link that you can send directly to a person. So PayPal is still good. But if you don't trust it, if you don't like PayPal for some reason, there are other options. Another alternative would be using Ko-Fi. On Ko-Fi, you can set donations, you can set payments, you can even set commissions and monthly reoccurring payments. So you can use Ko-Fi for many things as well. And it's actually set for artists. You will have your custom page. So PayPal is actually good too. You should check it out. I think for us as artists, it is good to have PayPal, especially if you don't have things like Patreon in place. It's a very valuable tool. But if you want to be even more careful and you want to have some kind of platform that is protecting you even more from those scams, you can set up your Etsy shop and set your commissions as uh, digital listings. So this way, yes, you will have to pay a certain percentage to Etsy. So that's a downside of it. But on the other hand, you will have Etsy's protection. So if something was to go wrong or there is a problem with a client, they will help you deal with that. Plus, Etsy has multiple advantages, like you can have a print on demand set up as well, so that if somebody likes your commission and they want it printed, you can offer it as well. So that's a good source and uh, again, extra protection. And the last option would be using Fiverr or Upwork. You can have your profile there, you can have your gig or your hourly rate set up on those platforms. And when somebody's trying to order a commission from you, you can just send them a link and they can purchase it through there. But then again, with Etsy or Fiverr or Upwork, you would have to pay a certain percentage. And usually Fiverr and Upwork, they take even bigger percentage as I know. So I would say, you know, it depends how high you want to set your pricings. I don't use Fiverr or Upwork for that now. I do have an Etsy shop, but it's a little bit different. The reason I use it is so that I can also send my prints. So I would say Coffee and PayPal are still good. If you want to extra production, Etsy can be good as well. And if you're really paranoid or you don't like Etsy for some reason, you can use Fiverr or Upwork. That works as well. But it's just that the difference is you're going to have to pay a little bigger percentage. But on the plus side, you will have uh, extra protection from those platforms. So you can choose any one of those options. They're all good and safe. Just be cautious, be careful, and stay alert when you're dealing with those things. If you want to be better known as an artist, if you want to get more commissions, it is a good idea to have a social media presence. And I have a video of five things you should avoid, absolutely avoid and never do as an artist when you post on your art Instagram. Check it out in this video over here. And I'll see you guys next time.